Um, I was uh, disappointed, actually, that she um, dropped out and had to suspend her campaign. But I don't think that you can look at that uh, without also looking at the fact that as a woman of color, um, she also faced unprecedented sexism compounded by racism. Apparently, being a modern Democrat person of color means never having to take any kind of responsibility for anything. And blaming groups of people based on their skin color is totally acceptable. This is the bizarro world of modern left-wing ideology where they've convinced themselves that it's impossible to be racist to white people. Leading to situations like this where they're actually blaming white people for a failed presidential campaign. After a poorly ran campaign and more cringy moments than I can count, Kamala Harris has finally finally dropped out of the race. Anna, thank you guys. And my All pronouns right. are she, her, and hers. She, her, and hers. Mine too. Instead of analyzing her mistakes in order to improve the next campaign, they instead choose to demonize white Americans as horrible, racist, sexist monsters. There's no question that there were obviously problems with her um, campaign. I think there were obviously financial problems, but I don't think that you can look at that uh, without also looking at the fact that as a woman of color, um, she also faced unprecedented sexism compounded by racism. Unprecedented racism and sexism? From where? The media bent over backwards to run cover for her and promote her. You know, it's almost as if we're supposed to just accept that as the default position. White Americans are just so sexist and racist that Kamala Harris never had a chance. It's just ironic that she's making these broad, sweeping generalizations about an entire group of people based on nothing but their skin color. Only a week ago, one of Harris's top aides resigned, saying, quote, I no longer have confidence in our campaign or its leadership. This aide is a person who was dedicated enough to Kamala Harris that she worked for her campaign. She wasn't some sort of closet racist that just suddenly turned on her because of her skin color. The media ran cover for her. CBS and NBC were downright gloomy about her exit from the campaign, but never even mentioned the resignation letter. How convenient for her. I don't know, maybe the campaign was just badly run and that's why she had to drop out. Maybe her approval among black Americans dropped for some reason. Maybe, just maybe, America isn't a den of horrible racist monsters. This country voted in a black president for two terms. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. Yeah. To say that this country has not proven the opposite of what you're saying, I think, is, is factually wrong. Actually, um, Abby, I, I think that there's, there's just no question that we did have a black president twice. And, and I, I think that's wonderful. But I think the election of President Trump is, is, may prove my point. <laughs> what? Of course, it's Trump's fault. Wrong. Wasn't Kamala really unpopular with black voters? And I could be wrong about this, but I think Trump is even polling higher with black voters. And make no mistake, the fact that there's only white candidates left that qualify for the debates is the main reason for this outburst. Left-wingers were losing their minds all day long on Twitter yesterday because all the remaining candidates are so white. Perhaps somebody should remind these people that around 62% of the country is still white, so it's not really that unusual. Laura Ducca, an alleged journalist and, quote, spiritual lesbian with 414,000 followers, tweeted, quote, Kamala Harris officially ended her campaign today, which means that all of the candidates who are currently qualified for the Democrat debate are white. White supremacy is not just a Fox News problem, folks. Ugh, white people existing on stage is white supremacy. Ashley Nicole Black, who has 112,000 followers, tweeted, quote, there was a coordinated right-wing campaign against Harris. A lot of those talking points were taken up by liberals and now we're set to have an all-white debate stage. No, <laughs> no. Imagine being outraged that your political opposition has a coordinated campaign against you and then blaming white people. Matt Viser, a national reporter for the Washington Post, tweeted, quote, With Kamala Harris out, the debate stage in December at this point will be all white candidates. Striking for a field that was historically large and historically diverse. How progressive of you to minimize these people down to nothing but their skin color. I don't support any of these people, but I imagine they worked hard to get where they're at. Nuts to all that, they're just a bunch of albino cave beasts. It goes on and on, but I'll spare you the brain damage. So today I'm a little angry, I have to say, that 
We started with one of the most diverse fields in our history, giving people pride, and we're spiraling towards a debate stage that potentially we're still fighting to get on it, but could have uh, six people with no diversity whatsoever. How is that not completely racist? He says that because it's going to be all white people on the stage that it will lack any diversity. But when I look at that stage, I see that there are both men and women, so that's diversity right there. It just goes to show that to many left-wingers, diversity simply means no white people. The fact is, Harris was unpopular and her campaign poorly run. Harris definitely had a problem with a certain demographic of people, but it wasn't the whites. That's it for today. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, you should check me out on Twitter and on Facebook, where I post stories and videos daily. If you want to support this channel, you can do so on Patreon, Subscribestar, or by just making a donation on PayPal. You can find all the links in the description and the pinned comment. Thank you.